The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Young men are looking for authentic people. People who carry themselves in truth, but they are scarce. But I want you to be on the side of Jesus and show yourself up as one who is on his side. Truth has fallen in the streets. But God will not just sit down for truth to fall in the streets. He did something about that far back in Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 59. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. If truth has fallen down, where will honesty? So he says the whole truth has fallen down. So honesty cannot enter because he is a junior brother. The big brother has fallen down. Where is honesty? Truth has fallen in the street. Honesty cannot enter. The next, this is verse 1. So he developed that, spoke about truth, the way truth has fallen down, and then he came to verse 14, please. Let's jump to verse 14. Our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the street. Now he repeats the verse 1 in verse 14. It means that there is evidence that truth has fallen down. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything shall be established. Yes, truth is gone. And anyone who re renounces evil is attacked. This is so practical in our workplaces. If, if you show yourself to be announcing evil, you'll be attacked. I met this lady who was my classmate, very brilliant lady. I knew she was working in an institution. But I went to Kanishi Market and I met her. What are you doing here? She's selling some provisions. He said, Eric, I can't stand what is going on at my workplace. I don't want to lose my Christianity. So I've left the job. I will just sell. Whatever little that God gives me, it's okay. I'm married. She just said that and understood what was going on. But you see, verse 15 says that, yes, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself, stepped out to save them with a strong arm and his justice sustained them. It didn't end there. This is verse, what? 16. Now, let's go a little bit ahead, reading verse 17. Isaiah, please. 5, 4. Isaiah 59. Verse 17 onwards. <clears throat> he puts on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrath, wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak, according to what they have done. So he will be repaid. He will repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foe. He will repay the islands their due. Let's take the 16 again. 
he saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for himself. And his own righteousness sustained him. His own righteousness sustained him. If we jump to verse 20, the Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is in you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips now. Back in Isaiah 59, when God saw that truth has fallen on the street, he made a plan through Jesus Christ to bring back truth. That is why he's talking about the, in Zion, the church, truth in his son. Salvation through his son will have to bring back truth on the planet Earth. Let's go back to what we are talking about. What is truth? Verse 37 says that, John 18, 37. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify of the truth. Now, listening to this, I want you to repeat this after me. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Now, so now there is, a, there, there is going to be a group of people who should be on the side of truth. Let me just bring a story and then try to throw some light on this statement. Moses had been called by God to the Mount Sinai. Forty days, forty nights, Moses was not appearing. Then the Israelites attacked Aaron. This Moses who brought us here. We don't know what has become of him. Make us a God to lead us on this wilderness. Because he was supposed to be our leader and we don't know where we are going. So make us a God. Every road will lead us there. And then Aaron hearkened to the voice of the people. And Aaron made a God. Soon Moses came. Let's listen to Aaron. The high priest, if he is doing this, I don't know what will happen to the low priest. <laughs> no, Exodus 32, 21. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? That is Exodus 32, 21. Do not be angry, my Lord. Aaron answered, you know how prone these people are are to evil. They said to me, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold. Now listen to what the, the, the high priest is going to say. And I threw it into the fire. And out came this calf. <laughs> when he just collected the gold and he threw it into the fire, then the calf jumped. <laughs> this is a lie. Look at, look at the, the high priest. Truth has fallen down. Verse 26. So he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Now, these are all Israelites. But Moses is saying that whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. Let's go back to Jesus. John chapter 18, 37. You are a king, then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. 
In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify of the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. Who is on the law side? Who is on the side of the truth? Everyone who is on the side of the truth will listen to him. Not just follow the crowd. If you're on the side of the truth, then listen to him. John chapter 8, verse 30 to 32. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. As Jesus was speaking, many people believed in him. If you believe in him, you become a member on his side. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This scripture is loaded. To those who have believed and come to, to him, he said, if you hold to my teachings, if is if, because some sing about Christ, but they wouldn't. When they see money, they can't stand for the truth. If you hold to my teachings, hold, have it and hold it to my teachings. You are really, it means that they are false disciples. You are really my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will bring you freedom. The truth should bring freedom to Ghana. The truth should bring freedom to the church because truth is the way. Anyone on the side of Christ, show yourself up and stand for the truth. Why is it so? Because when you are born again, you become a member of the church. And the church, according to 1 Timothy 3, 14 and 15, is the pillar and foundation of truth. Truth has fallen. It has fallen because it doesn't have that concrete foundation. But the church is the pillar and foundation of truth. So when truth has fallen in the street, it shouldn't be in the church. So when the world is looking for truth and searching for truth, it is a church that should go out there and lift the truth up. Who is on the side of Christ? Anyone who is on my side listening to me. Let me try and conclude by saying this. The Levites who came to the side of Moses and to God, when they got to the promised land, they never gave them land as they did to the other tribes. What they did was that they scattered them among their brothers. They gave them 48 towns, which was scattered among the people of Israel. Because truth is lost amongst the people. So they have to scatter these people so that they live among them. So that through them, they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. All of us are representing one sphere or the other. All of us are coming from a certain kind of profession. We are not all the same. You don't find me in the hospital, no. If I will go, then maybe I'm going for medication. You don't see me holding... Um, I was going to say chalk, but I don't know whether I still use chalk. Maca. Anyway, it's the still chalk maca. Eh? Because some are using chalk. Because I'm not a teacher. So you don't place me there. If you, I have to be here. But to equip every one of us so that we are unleashed to go and be scattered among the people and reveal the truth. Anyone on God's side should show himself up as a person who is standing for the truth. One person cannot possess the nations. It takes all of us to take our spheres for Christ. And then all of us together, we can change Madagana. We can transform her by our truth. We can transform her by the light and the salt that we have. Let me read this one. 
from us 17. From verse 24, 26, 27. As 17, 26, 27. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history. All of us, God has marked our appointed times in history. The time that Machia was born, I was not born. Because it was not my appointed time in history. I was in the mind of Christ. I was in the bosom of God. But my time had not come. So I was waiting. Now, this is the time in history that you and I are here. He has marked our time in history. The boundaries of their lands where you should live. Here is Ghana. This is the boundaries of our land. See, when you move to be in the United States and you have United States citizenship, uh, <laughs> the people themselves, they know that you are a Ghanaian. You, this is where you belong. They know. He has set our boundaries for us. And this is Ghana. Why did he do that? Why did he scatter us? According to the Apostle Paul, he has set the boundaries for us. God did this. Now, I want us to read together. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far away. So God is scattering us in the spheres. Some of you are in the banks. Some are in the schools. Some are in the hospitals. God is doing all this so that they who do not know him may seek him and perhaps find him. Allow yourself to be a true branch of Jesus Christ. And wherever you are, know that you are representing the truth. Truth has fallen in the streets. But it shouldn't fall in the church. And if you're a member of the church, ye that are men, arise. And anyone that is on the side of the truth, show forth that you are on the side of the truth. We can take these nations. We can take it for Christ. When we lift the banner of truth up. I'm hoping in God and hoping in you that we will not disappoint Jesus Christ. He came as a witness of the truth. We can't do otherwise. May the Lord help all of us. May he bless us. May he open our eyes of understanding that we shall be ever on the side of the truth, no matter the circumstances. God bless us all.